Hi folks, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Please do hit subscribe if you haven't done so yet. It really does help when you do that. So today folks, we're going to be comparing the sounds of two iconic guitar pickups, the two original PAFs. Now you might be thinking there's only one original PAF, it was put in Gibson Les Paul Bursts of the late 1950s, and that's certainly one of them. Now I've got replicas of those earliest PAFs in this guitar here. These are the throwback SLE 101s, and they are Alnico 2 magnets, and that is a clone of the earliest iteration from 1957, which were Alnico 2. So no stone is left unturned in chasing vintage accuracy in these reproductions. Now, there was another pickup which you'll have definitely heard of, but you might not know the story. This is a Filtertron designed by Ray Butts, primarily for Gretsch, but as a pickup for Chet Atkins. And this particular one here is a TV Jones Full Fidelity Ray Butts Filtertron. So much like the throwback SLE 101s, this is a replica of the earliest iteration of the Filtertron from Ray's original sketches and specifications is as vintage accurate as you can get. Now, nobody can really verify what events happened and the order they happened in, but legend has it that Essentially, Ray Butts and Seth Lover at Gibson were working on humbucking pickups at very similar times in the early 1950s. Now, the humbucking pickup as a concept had been around for a few decades at that point, but back then the magnets weren't strong enough to work in a guitar pickup and the amplifiers weren't loud enough either, so the idea was just abandoned. But it was rekindled in the early 50s. Now, it gets a little bit convoluted because so say, Ray Butts was served with a cease and desist order from Gibson, saying the humbucking pickup as a concept was their idea and he should keep his hands off. Ray Butts then came back saying he could prove he came up with the idea for the humbucking pickup before Seth Lover at Gibson, and it all got a little bit messy. But for the sake of this video, let's just say that both men were working on a similar idea at similar times. That's the best way of looking at it, I think. I think they both deserve credit for the invention of the humbucking pickup as we know it today. So what I wanted to do today, seeing as I have very, very accurate clones of the earliest iterations of those two pickups from the mid 1950s, I wanted to put them alongside each other to see what the differences are in tone between Seth's design and Ray's design. What do they actually sound like? Now, of course, Filtertrons are most commonly associated with Gretsch guitars, and PAFs are most commonly associated with Gibsons, Les Pauls, essentially. But this guitar here is a Grunlin, and of course, this is a junior, so I just have a bridge pickup in here, so we're just going to be looking at bridge pickups today. But it's actually quite handy having this pickup in this guitar, because Gretsch's definitely have a sound of their own, partly because they're mostly hollow, and of course, Gibsons are mostly solid bodies. So having a Filtertron in a solid body guitar will let us more accurately compare the fundamental similarities and differences between these two PAFs. Now of course there are other variables as well. My Gibson Les Paul has an ABR1 bridge, this has a wraparound tailpiece, this is a solid lump of walnut, the Les Paul is a lump of mahogany with a maple cap. There's lots of different things that will influence the sound, but we can get a pretty good idea of the differences and similarities between these two pickups by plugging just a bridge pickup with a Les Paul into an amp and putting these two guitars alongside each other to see how different a Gibson PAF sounds from a Ray Butts PAF. So that's what we're going to do today, folks. I'm going to use my JTM45 clone at a few different levels of gain and just plug the guitars straight into the amps and compare the fundamental differences in how these pickups sound. So this should be a really fun video. I can't wait to hear the results. So without further ado, folks, here we go. <laughs>
there we are folks. Now please do comment underneath, let me know what you were hearing today, which of those pickups was your favourite and why. I love chatting nerdy guitar stuff with you folks in the comment sections. Now the first point I wanted to make off the back of playing these two guitars today is you can't take DC resistance as output of a pickup. Most people will say that a pickup with a higher DC resistance is a hotter output pickup, but it isn't really the case. Now this bridge throwback, very accurate to the original Gibson PAFs, has a DC resistance of about 8, 7.9, something around there. Now this TV Jones Filtertron, again very accurate to raise original specifications, has a DC resistance of about 4, half that of the Gibson. And yet, in many circumstances today, I would say this Filtertron sounded louder than the Gibson PAF, even though it's half the DC resistance. It's certainly not half the volume, is it? So you can't use DC resistance as a measure of output, really. There's many more factors at play. Now, in terms of the fundamental tonal differences, they are pretty different sounding, aren't they? Especially considering they were come up with by very similar brains at similar points in history. They do sound pretty different. Now, the Filtertron, as per Ray's original name for this pickup, is very full fidelity, isn't it? It has a beautiful clarity in the top end, a real sort of pristine sheen to it that the Gibson PAF doesn't have. Now, I would say the Filtertron is much thinner in the mid-range than the Gibson. The Gibson sounds very sort of boxy in comparison to the Filtertron, doesn't it? But essentially, those are the two classic sounds of these two classic PAFs. One is really bright and jangly and chimey. The other is a bit more mid-rangey and a bit more rolled off up top. Gibson PAFs, very accurate replicas at least, aren't dark pickups by any stretch of the imagination in the grand scheme of humbuckers, but they do sound a bit more sort of boxy and rolled off than the Filtertron. Now, even in this solid body guitar, this definitely has quite a Gretschy sound, doesn't it? It's very synonymous with those Gretsch guitars. So even though this isn't a big hollow body, a lot of that Gretsch magic does come out of the vintage accurate Filtertrons. So there we are, folks. That's my summation. Please do let me know your thoughts and opinions underneath. Do you agree or disagree with everything I've said? I love hearing from you folks in the comments. But for now, thank you ever so much for watching, folks. I hope you learned something about the history of PAF pickups. Please do carry on subscribing. I know I always say it, but it makes a huge difference when you do that. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.